All right, so welcome back. This is the second of the set of videos. This is module number two, where we're gonna take a look at the science and engineering practices. Uh, this is really digging into what we want our students to do. Module one was kind of like, why would I wanna change? And But if you're gonna teach something other than content, obviously we gotta teach something. So that's really where I find the science and engineering practices live, okay? And so, as we think about it, even just these symbols, these eight symbols, these reddish circles here on the right-hand side, they really represent the skills that our students need, that we're gonna to try to have this STEM operating inside their head, and the output is going to be that they're gonna be able to do these eight things that we've identified as skills, okay? And that includes asking questions and defining problems, developing and using models, planning and carrying out investigations, analyzing and interpreting data, using mathematics and computational thinking, constructing explanations, designing solutions, engaging in argument from evidence, and obtaining, evaluating, communicating information. Okay, so here from the beginning, um, there are eight of them, and we don't treat them in any particular order, but I'll be honest that the top two are really the easiest places that I find when I work with teachers to get a start on using these practices. So this first module is gonna explain those first two. And I would encourage you to be thinking of, oh, this is how I could use these. This is what my students could be doing to start practicing and demonstrating evidence that they have these skills. Okay, and there is a document that is available in the class. It has tons of links. Okay, I can't begin to give you all the information and background on rubrics and things and ways to assess. I'm just going to try to build your understanding of what these skills are and what they might look like. So take advantage of those other resources that I included within the course. Okay, and this is an explanation of that first one, okay? Asking questions and divining problems, okay? Really, it's that chance to ask and refine questions that lead to descriptions and explanations of how the natural design world works and what can be empirically tested. It's getting back to what do we want our students to figure out and, and what are the questions that they could ask? It's a very core skill that scientists use constantly. They look at something, they see something happen, and they ask legitimate questions that then can be tested and explored. Believe it or not, it's a skill. Our young people have it, but we still need to practice it and honor it, okay? Because it's something that we can even assess. Can you ask questions, okay? And you know, really, it gets down to the core of I believe that any day, if I was to walk into your classroom and sit down next to little Alan who's doing something in your class, I'd want to say, hey, what are you trying to figure out? Alan should be able to answer that. Oh, I'm trying to figure this out. I'm trying to understand this. Not that I'm doing this worksheet. What are you trying to figure out? That's the core of these questions. That's why we lead with this. If we lead with questions, if they're researching a question, then we've got some kind of direction to the thought. And that comes up even in the five E's that we'll talk about in module four. Okay. And not all questions are created the same. That's really important to think about and understand because the questions that come out of your mouth are going to guide the questions that students have. We can have these straightforward factual questions. What event? Who's the best friend? I can say one world. What was the variable? Not, that doesn't even lead me to a discussion. I want the kind of questions, we call them open-ended questions, okay? How does art shape a culture? What do problem solvers do when they get stuck? Is there ever a just war? Who is a true friend? You can think of those. I just pulled those from the context because STEM lives in every subject area, STEM thinking, okay? So we're trying to think broadly because once we have these skills, that's why they're so important. The ability to ask questions gets people to try to understand rich things such as systems or functions or equilibrium or scale. Okay, all the concepts that we'll talk about in module three. Okay, so how do you get kids to ask questions? You give them something confusing. You show a tanker truck collapsing. You have them play with equilibrium. You present them with a problem that says, okay, it doesn't look like this log should balance in this picture, does it? Would that really work? Okay. And then we talk, 
Our classes are full of situations where we talk. We have what are called scientist meetings where questions can be genuinely explored. And we practice this from the time we're kindergartners in the lower left, fifth graders, eighth graders, you know, even in music class. Okay, that's, that's a skill that we want to develop, the ability to ask questions, listen to each other's questions, and promote answers. Okay, the second skill that I want to talk about is making models. Okay, and that's the idea that we can construct models that are tools to represent ideas and provide us with explanations. Might be diagrams, drawings, physical models, mathematical models, analogies, comparisons, and even computer simulations. That's a skill that students need to have to be able to not only work with models, but create models. Okay, so what does that look like? We are constantly making models in science class, whether it's doing them on the tabletop with our whiteboard tables or walking around a map. A map is just a model. Drawing models of what happened in classes and how can we explain something? Can it predict what's going to happen in the future? Okay, and Models can be as simple with young people as letters. Understanding what that A stands for is a model. Same with numbers, same when we put words together. Okay. It can be models of complex situations. The right-hand side, I asked my Uzbek teachers, what is positive atmosphere in a class? What does it look like? We can have models of very abstract things, and what we want our students to do is make them, interpret them, and work with them, okay? Can also be mathematical models. Okay, this is a mathematical model here that we work with, which is how could x squared plus 3x minus 2, x, how could x plus 3, x minus 2 be broken into a quadratic formula? Oh, it's x squared plus x minus 6. Okay, that is a whole lesson there. And equilibrium equations are models, balancing things. And you can see some other examples of things that teachers did in Uzbekistan, just practicing working with models. The more we work with them, the more familiar we get with them. Okay, so as I wrap up, those are the first two. The next two modules will deal with the next three and the next three. But again, they're not in any particular order. I just find these first two models and asking questions to be really accessible. So hope that was helpful.